Welcome back to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Niklaus and we are here with another guide on uh, on sort of the very late game of this build. Thank you very much for following along both on Twitch and here on YouTube. And uh, today we're going to be talking about endgame science and it's going to be super amazing. So I have something for you. Imagine, if you will, that there was a blueprint that you could build. And if you built that somewhere, then magically all of your troubles oh i can't believe i just stamped it down and, and it actually worked then uh, stamp it down this blueprint and then magically you would have 30 of each science per second built and produced and also uh, all of the engine matter and then break it into 37.5 science uh, white science per second that is then being consumed and uh, you are just happy and all it takes is one half of a half planet so it takes basically a half a planet on the circumference and half of a planet here so a quarter of the planet so it means you with this blueprint you can stamp it down four times if you feel so inclined and then you have 120 science per second but uh, that uh, will do one of these and then you can i leave it as an exercise to the watcher to uh, to build your own now this build is um, is comprised of a lot of smaller builds so you can also build it uh, separately and i will be going through each of them separately and the good news is that you can get access to all of these. Uh, there are two ways of getting access. Uh, you can click the link in the description below. Then you will be taken to my website, which has a link to my Google Drive. And on that Google Drive, you can find one that's called Dark Fog and Game Science. And then you have all these blueprints available for you immediately. That's the easy way. That's for everyone. And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can uh, pledge on Patreon. And if you are pledging on Patreon, then you can get access to save games so you can mess around in the games as well. But all the blueprints are available to everyone. Hope you appreciate that. So we are going to dive into each of those. If you find that interesting, be sure to uh, to hit the like button, consider subscribing, join the live streams, all that stuff. And of course, for a particular few of you, make sure you go to the comment section and comment that I'm ruining the game by creating blueprints to stamp down. That's very important. I expect at least one comment of that type uh, in all of my blueprint related videos for every game I make. So thank you for, for that consistency. A good place to begin is at the beginning. So let's start at the beginning, starting with the blue science. And there are different places to build it you can build it wherever you like but uh, i have some consistent places and that is you can see here this is the meridians going all the way through this is the line that goes all the way unbroken from the north pole to the south pole or technically from the south pole to the north pole if you like that way uh, better and uh, there are 20 of those around the planet and those are the meridians that's what i call them and uh, they are and where i build it is one square block in and then three square blocks in and that's where I build it. So it's like one in and then one, two, three. That is the location for this. Uh, there are other locations as well. The, the three locations that is here. This is the very middle. And then it is three from that side, which is the equator. That is a really important way of, uh, of setting it up. And the way I do reason I do that is because then you can have three in uh, interstellar logistics stations next to each other and you can also build inter two interstellar logistics stations up here if you build it in a different way then you suddenly squeeze yourself out and then you cannot build three next to each other in the in this area so always like this also it looks amazing once uh, once you build it up consistently now since this is the first one we are going to talk a little bit about uh, all the features of it well some of the features the idea is i'm bringing stuff in here with the interstellar logistics station i'm bringing it from local and remote stations and we have warpers coming in and we are bringing it out here. The uh, final product is only provided locally because I will also consume it locally uh, on this planet. Uh, I'm bringing two additional things in. The warpers are being brought in and the proliferation are being brought in by the bot network. So you need to make sure that on this uh, planet that you're building the signs on, you have proliferation in abundant quantities because you need quite a lot. You need that in uh, the bot network and you need the warbirds in the bot network. The reason I do that is because I don't want to waste two inventory slots here. And they are transported in so, so small quantity that it makes sense to only uh, bring them in by bot bot network. Here we go. We are. We can see that the first thing uh, is being built. We are, of course, using the best materials in the game. We're using the recomposing assemblers. We're using the pile sorters. We're using the self-evolution labs. So all those things are as fast as they can be. And if we go to our science overview or our production overview, we will be seeing here on a one minute cycle. This one will get up and it'll get to uh, 1800 once it is done. But we can start working on the next part because there's not much 
uh, additional stuff here in this one. The red signs, there are two kind of ways to make red signs. You can make it with oil as an inbound, or you can make it as I do here with getting the extra materials inbound, the graphite and as well as the hydrogen. I prefer this way because when the oil is a little bit complicated and it takes a lot of space and it's just this, uh, this self-feeding mechanism and oil just, I feel like it tends to run out too quickly. While coal is something that when you get to a planet with 10 million coal and, and a good amount of, of vein utilization, you can see that it's, it's actually just vast quantities of it. And hydrogen, well, obviously it's the most abundant uh, material in the universe, so you will never be in short supply of that. Well, you can actually, but, uh, but not in this case. So that's being brought in here, and we also have the red science immediately getting online, and we're, get, of course, getting that in here. The blue is chugging along, and we can see that the blue has now stabilized at 1800 science per minute. This is beautiful. So red is coming along. Another important uh, part of this build, or these builds, is the fact that I have warnings like this that will indicate if there's, if the for 60 seconds have not been any throughput, then it will be should be like this not that it really makes a difference uh, no cargo then it'll throw a warning so we can see up here that there's a warning and the signs has stopped working so that is pretty neat as well so you can always get a sense of whether things are working or not we move on to the third science and that's the last of the science that can be built in an easy way in uh, 30 signs per second in a simple build and it's gonna go built here again let's build it I really want to build like the initial parts we want to build Oh, that was not it. It was actually this one I wanted to build here. That is, uh, we want to get the proliferation as fast as possible. And here we get the diamonds. They're made from kimberlite, the titanium, and also the organic crystals. Organic crystals are actually mined on this planet, so that's probably coming in faster. You can see 10 of those have already skipped out uh, immediately. And um, that goes in here, and it becomes these... Uh, titanium, crystal, uh, titanium crystals. I'm not considering titanium crystals a base component because it's only used for a very few items in the game. So I'll make it in as part of those builds. Uh, generally, things that are used for constructing any uh, buildings is something I want a steady supply of, while things that are intermediates that only are used for other components like casimir crystals or pink container. Pink containers, maybe? Yeah, pink. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, they are not going to be built as separate builds, they'll be built as part of a larger build. And that's what we see here as well. The yellow science is coming along. It's using a little bit more than one uh, city block or more onto the next meridian here. That's not really a problem. We'll just skip a little bit further ahead for the next one. Oh, there was a little belt that was missing here. And we see that was uh, the diamonds coming in. The diamonds get proliferated. I'm proliferating both anything coming in and out. So we're proliferating the science on the way out. That doesn't matter because we're also proliferating it on the, the other side. But that's uh, that's just like a, a safe precaution in terms of just making sure that we have a lot of... Uh, uh, make sure that we are proliferating. So I'm just over proliferating because you're not wasting it. If you have something that is proliferated and it goes through, then it becomes, it doesn't use an extra charge of proliferation. So here we go. We can see that the yellow signs is working and we can also see that the red signs in the meantime has managed to get to the 1800 we wanted and the structure matrix, the yellow signs is progressing as well. So we move on to the next part and that is the purple signs. This is where things get a little more advanced because the purple signs is quite a lot more difficult so instead of making 30 as we do here we are only making 10 and that in and of itself is going to be big enough and troublesome enough to build so let's stamp this one down i am going to start by going to we'll get this one built and we'll get this one built and then i'll work towards getting the uh, the proliferation in so the proliferation get in here and once that's done, then we can just build the rest of it. Now, this proliferation or this uh, this build is using oil because there's no other way to get light oil, and we need light oil for plastic. It would be really nice if there was an alternate uh, product or an alternate a rare resource that could be turned into plastic. That would be nice. I don't know what that would be, but it doesn't matter. It can it can be a magical component anyway. Uh, here we get more graphite, uh, energized graphite, and we also get the crude oil. The crude oil goes in and becomes hydrogen and light oil the hydrogen goes out and becomes stored here we have a um a warning on on this part so that we make sure that we don't run full on the hydrogen as well as we have a warning here for a traffic monitor here for the uh, the purple science that's important 
And uh, then we just slowly take the light oil. The light oil progresses and gets into becoming refi uh, becoming plastic. The plastic moves on and then gets supplemented with all of the remaining parts here. You can see that I'm considering processes to be a base component, the same as nanotubes, though they are not, uh, well, nanotubes come from the, uh, whatever they're called. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. What are they called? A spiny form, yes. Um, but processes and green turbines and quantum chips. I consider those to be something that you need to have separate factories for so you can just request it in here because you're going to need like stupidly vast quantities. And we get into this spaghetti mess uh, traffic distribution here, splitting things out into different locations. All this is an absolute nightmare to design, but hey, I designed it for you. So you can stamp it down if you like, or if you can take it apart, improve it in, and uh, make whatever changes you like. I have some rules on how I want things and the width and all that stuff. Like this cannot be wider than this because then I'll start bumping into other stuff. But good news is the purple science is operational and I can then stamp down two more of these and then get uh, the full, full build of purple science. And so now the purple science has been built as well and completely built. And as you can see, the width of this is extremely tight. This is, these are bumper to bumper and they are all the way out here. There is literally no more room for on this one to make it any wider. And so this is just uh, efficient space utilization for sure. You can of course do these things if I wanted to, if I knew that I wanted to make make this in 30 signs per second i could have made like a, a, a giant build and consolidated and all that stuff but i really like the fact that you can build it as 10 per second and then if you don't want to build it as big you can build 10 per second or you can build it on different planets so you can do whatever and then have it as modular and then build more modules as you need and let's have a look at the science generally we can see the yellow science has uh, managed to get up to 1800 in the meantime while well, i've built the purple science and the purple science is now slowly getting up here we will probably see the electromagnetic matrix and starting to fall down as the uh, local storage is filling up and then it just goes into idle state. Here's the next meridian and uh, we can then start working on the next science, the last of the basic science, and that is the green science. Let's see, that comes in here. Green science, let's stamp you down here. And uh, that is again, also like the purple science, it's only three per second or it's it's three per second. It's ten per second. So we'll build the first one and we'll walk through how that works. Let's see. This one is ah, that was the wrong one. Uh, so you can see here, this is there's a lot of uh, of these. What are they called? Plant? What are they called? Particle colliders. Mm -hmm. And uh, they take up a lot of space and they can't really be built in any way efficient. And uh, that's a really unfortunate part about this. So that's unfortunately as uh, as densely packed as I can make them and therefore it takes quite a lot of space. Also, when you design your own things, when you're dealing with particularly stuff like the particle collider, because they're so big, if you build a design that works close uh, close to this edge of a, before they sort of, there's the squares jump and because there's a fault line and then, or close to the equator, then uh, either, uh, yeah, they might not work in the other location. So you need to make sure that you are building in when designing both works close and when the squares are small and when the squares are big so that's always a little bit of a challenge particularly with big buildings such as the particle collider what are we getting in we're getting as i said the electromagnetic turbines are considered a base component because we need those come in and then all the ingredients for the the particle container and then goes into strange matter the strange matter gets some deuterium from here and then we get some mix in some diamonds uh, in order to make the green lenses that's what we are building here green lenses and then after green lenses, we go in and make some green science. Let's see, this one is getting one of the items and we're not really getting you yet. And that's because there's a long chain of, uh, of the process here. First, we need to make particle containers. You can see how few we actually have here because it's a multi-step process. The, the green science produces 10 per second, so it needs eight inbound per second. That means this one has to produce eight in outbound, but that means it only needs to get ingredients for 6.4 because if 6.4 becomes 8 outbound and then this one then goes back and that becomes um, from 6.4 because 5.12 inbound here and so on and so forth down the line here and that means we don't actually need a lot of this because it sort of propagates upwards did a lot of extensive calculations but green science is working we can see the first one is online so we'll spend the time on building the two other ones so we get to the 30 green science per second as well. 
And now the green signs is built, all three of them are built and ready. We are having a little bit of an issue with uh, the proliferation not coming in fast enough, but it's just a matter of uh, filling these up. You can see this has been filled up and as we get more inbound, we are getting 200 inbound here, we're getting 200 inbound here, oh, only 120. But they're coming inbound and as you can see, they will just be flowing down the line and then they'll fill up everything. So in the beginning, it won't everything won't be proliferated entirely, but that's, uh, that's why we proliferate everything basically twice, uh, both the output signs and also the, when we consume it again. Let's have a look at our production stats. We can see that the information matrix has uh, scaled up to 1800 where we want it to. And you can see that the energy matrix is slowly scaling down because it's probably filling up the inventory and it's just filling up the internal buffers. And also the blue science is completely gone because that is uh, now completely idle. And the gravity matrix here, the green, the green one, is slowly, slowly building up. You can see all these things are in progress. And we can then move on to the next part. The next part is uh, a little bit different from uh, from the other ones because it's only one built. Uh, this is the white science here, and uh, that was, is going to be built here. That is a combined uh, build for both the uh, critical photons into antimatter as well as the, uh, the the consumption, the production and consumption of this as well. So it's a it's a lot of things in one build, and we'll stamp it down, and then we'll walk through how it works. The first thing we need to uh, notice is over here, we're going to get some critical photons. Go, 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 go. <laughs> we used all of, I had an inventory full of items. Uh, one thing though that I haven't uh, talked about is um, planetary shield. I have not included planetary shields in this build, but of course you need to add planetary shields to your uh, design as well. But I didn't want to sort of impose my setup for planetary shields on you. Now, what do we have here? Well, we, uh, we have some warpers coming in because these need to be warping out and getting these uh, items. But also we are not proliferating this part. Why? Because you can only do production speed up and energy consumption, you cannot do extra product. And since you can't do extra product, I don't really feel that it's worth doing, uh, doing that. And uh, since I won't get any free stuff. Uh, so it's just a matter of how many entities I want. And I choose to have uh, just the 30 entities so I can make the 30 uh, what is it called? They're called antimatter per second. And as you can see, with 30 of these, it fits absolutely perfect within the constraint of a city block. So quite obviously, that is what we're going to do. And then moving on to the next one. Yes, this is coming inbound. And we're now seeing all the stuff coming in here. That's going really quickly. They're coming in super, super quick. I'm just having an internal buffer of 10,000. Interestingly, well, not in it's not particularly interesting, but you see all these have already 10,000, but we don't have that for the gravity matrix because the gravity matrix was just the last one we built. So that's going to be only producing at the quantity that it's, uh, or it's running in. And there's no internal buffer yet for that. Uh, the build down here consists of uh, two different builds. The first one is Let's see if we can dive down in here into the uh, nitty gritty details. So we are getting all of the five different science packs we just built, plus the uh, antimatter down here that's going in into all of these builds. Why are they not building? Uh, they are not building. Oh, right. Okay, that's silly. I forgot that. <laughs> we ran out of, uh, of inserters here. There we go. That got built. Oh, and we also got a little visitor. That's funny. That is funny. Goodbye. This is why you really need to have uh, some <clears throat> some defenses here as well. Because there are visitors from afar. That one was Warpers. That uh, doesn't need to be there anymore. And what we see now is that we slowly start the production over here. Actually, maybe not slowly. Actually, it's... Uh, Okay, so it's not quite reaching all the way towards the end, but it will eventually. It just takes some time to fill up these towers. Uh, this number here should be 2,250. When it reaches 2,250, that means that is exactly the amount that we are trans we want to transport through. We are, of course, proliferating it so that it goes in proliferating and we get extra hashes out of it. If we look at our design here now, everything has sprung into action again. And you can see that the consumption here is 1,800, 1,800, 1,800, 1,800, and... This one is slowly getting there as well. Uh, somehow it's just lagging a little bit, but that's uh, that's fine. It'll uh, it'll be fine. I we, we sh mm. let's have a look at it and see why, right? And this uh, here is getting closer to the two thousand two hundred. 
Ah, so that made sense. It was, um, as I think it was a part of the build that was missing some inserter. So this tower wasn't working. And now that the tower is working, the last tower here for the last build of the green science, as that is uh, coming online and working fine, we should see that the gravity matrix is now also converging towards the 2000, uh, or to the 1800 that we want to have it at. So all we need to do now, as you can see here, the cons the pr the consumption of white signs is not matching yet. If we look at here, you can see that the consumption is less than the production, which shouldn't really make sense. But the reason why is because all these towers are busy filling in 10 in each one. And since there are 150 towers, then it takes a while to sort of fill the, these up and only when they are filled up and these buffers, then it goes into the next and next next. So until we, uh, we reach the steady state, then the production will be higher than consumption. That's actually where we are balancing out right now. Uh, we still need to make sure that the gravity matrix is working as it should and all this thing here is now converging closer to where we want it we want it to be 2250 but it'll get there another little uh, detail here i'm using these stack stacking pilers outbound but the problem you could say is that each one is producing a little bit asynchronous of the others so they will output one 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 and that means it's not going to be a fully stacked belt and since there are 37.5 it'll be more than a full belt so what i've done is i have set up these small pile sorters that basically take from here and put it back one step that works basically the same way as these uh awfully annoying things uh where are they, they wait, they've been moving those there these ones the pilers uh, the pile sorter works the same way, it's just smaller and easier to build. So a pile sorter, it doesn't work quite as well, but it, for, for this part, it just means that we can easily get the 37.5 on this belt and uh, fully operational. In terms of the consumption rates over here, you can see that the consumption rates, I have, uh, it depends on your tech research level here. Uh, where is it? That one, research level, you can get it to whatever you want. Uh, this is an infinite research. I don't really care for it to be higher than it is now. Now I have them at 300 signs per uh, hashes per second. That is perfectly fine for me because I actually really like these towers and I think they're beautiful. So I want to have them here. Also with this build, I have uh, 10 towers, 15 high for the production. So I should also have 10 towers, 15 high for the consumption, which is what we have now. And that means we have a little bit of excess capacity. The last two towers are probably not going to be ever getting into action, except when I forget to start the next science. And then we have a way of sort of burning through the, uh, the stockpile of white science, which I think is convenient enough to have. So that's why it's actually intended that this will be like two and a half towers empty. But symmetry is uh, important. We can now see that while I've been jabbering about, this one has uh, it's stacked up to the 2250 that we exactly wanted. And we will now see that here we have our production. Ah, oh, this uh, is not quite there. Uh, the hash rates as well. But this is what we want. Everything here is uh, is a full design for uh, for science, we have 30 of each of the signs per second, and they are going to be combined into white signs for 37.5 per second. And you have this um, amazing build that is just ready for you to stamp down in your own factory if you like. So I hope you uh, enjoyed it, appreciate it. If you do, be sure to hit the like button, comment uh, as usual that I'm ruining the game or just or any other good ideas. I'd also like to hear good ideas about other things that I should do in Dyson to program. I love playing it, but we're also very much at the late game now that we built designs like this. And uh, then uh, things are at a completely different scale than what we started off as. So really appreciate it. Also, you can come by my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Neela, where I'm streaming uh, most evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time, sometimes Dyson Sphere, sometimes Factorio, sometimes other games we're currently replaying Sekiro and we play other games as well. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care and as always, Stay effective.